The left-wing liberals in our media and Hollywood elite are having a collective meltdown over President Trump's mobilization of our military to restore law and order. In this video, we're going to take a look at President Trump's commanding leadership, proven by just how hysterical the media and Hollywood have become, and why such hysterics are all for naught, as the hysterics are just continuing to red pill America like never before. You're going to absolutely love it. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. I certainly hope you're all having a safe and wonderful start to your week. If this is your first time here on this channel, we post two videos a day analyzing current events and some super awesome conservative trends so that you can live in the present light of even better things to come. We help you to think better so that you can feel better. All right. So if you haven't already done so, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You're going to love interacting with this online community of conservatives from all over the world. They are simply the best. So let's begin with our video chat question of the day. Do you support President Trump's efforts at restoring law and order by deploying the military? Let us know in the comments section below. It's happened already in D.C. Uh, do you support President Trump's decision to deploy the military to restore law and order? Because we're going to find there are a whole lot of liberals out there they are pretty upset over this and we're going to see precisely why they think ending these riots is the worst thing that could be done but first imagine if you'd received a personal invitation to invest a mere 50 dollars in uber when it was just a startup on ipo day when it went public you would have made nearly $250,000. That same $50 invested in Amazon before it IPO'd would have made you over $7 million. So how would you feel if you could lock in on a ground floor opportunity in the hottest startups this year that everybody is fighting over? Well, you can. I'm sure you all know the multimillionaire investor, now TV star, Robert Hershevik from the hit show Shark Tank. I love the guy. We're family watch it all the time. Well, he and his team of ultra successful angel investors are here to help you get in on ground floor investment opportunities. Watch the free video at getangelrich.com or click on the link in the description below to see how you can participate in these potentially lucrative deals. And here's the key before they go mainstream, right? Don't wait. Check out the video at getangelrich.com. Dot com. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Now, a few months back, we did a video on a recent survey that found that Americans by quite a large number actually hate Hollywood and the legacy media, the mainstream Marxist media. A poll conducted by Morning Consult, which was called the Most Trusted Brands Poll, sought to gauge the level of brand trust among some of the more famous brands like Amazon and YouTube and Google and Chick-fil-A and all that. And they published their findings in a report that sought to shed light on attitudes and sentiments in our consumer culture. And what was so revealing is that when it came to the level of trust that consumers have for Hollywood, the percentage of Americans that actually trust Hollywood was just 4%. It was lower than the number who trusted Wall Street, which was at 5%, or who trusted the United States government, which was uh, 7%. And then when it came to the amount of Americans actually supporting the mainstream media with their trust, only 8% claimed to trust the media, which of course is a devastating number for Jim Acosta and Fredo Cuomo and Rachel Maddow and the like. Well, now with these riots... We can see precisely in high resolution precisely why so many despise and dismiss Hollywood and the legacy media as a total and complete waste of time and money. President Trump addressed the nation last night, and at the heart of his address was the promise to restore law and order to the streets of the nation by deploying the United States military if these moronic Democratic governors and mayors fail to get it together. Take a look. We will succeed. Our country always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. First, we are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. 
Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. Now, Trump has already deployed the military on the streets of D.C., and he's successfully restored order to the nation's capital. It's actually not that hard to do. The moment, you know, you begin seeing mass arrests, riots tend to dissipate rather quickly. Looters are not particularly interested in going to jail when they steal their iPhones. They're looting precisely because these big city Democratic mayors are refusing to send them to jail. That's why they loot. So D.C. came under control very, very quickly once the military was dispatched. And to show just how under control the nation's capital is, Trump actually walked out of the front door of the White House and walked across the street to the Episcopal Church that had gotten torched the night before. And he held up a Bible in defiance of the rioters and arsonists and looters. It was a, it was a good move on his part. And, you know, that's all Hollywood and our media elite needed to see in order to have their complete and total meltdown. So Don Lemon over at CNN, crying Don Lemon, he actually accused President Trump of teetering on the brink of dictatorship with this militarizing of the nation. Now this guy, Don Lemon, whose evening show on CNN has been collapsing in its ratings for months now. I mean, no one, literally no one watches him and we can see why. Don Lemon actually, along with the rest of CNN crew, is actively rooting for the rioters. Lemon has in the past defended Antifa and their violence, but now he's lambasting the president for doing the job that left-wing mayors and governors should have done all along. And he's actually lambasting the president, if you think it through, for restoring law and order to America's cities. He's accusing the president of being a dictator because Trump is actively attempting to stop the violence and arson and looting. I just, I mean, this is an upside down world in Lemon's head. And again, this is just the default nonsense coming from CNN. Look at this headline. Trump responds to protest. <laughs> no, protest, not riots, not violence, not looting, not arson, not mobs. No, protests. Peaceful pro Trump responds to protests with strongman act. Again, these are just hecklers disguised as journalists. Is it any wonder why no one believes these clowns anymore? But not to be outdone, Lemon's counterpart, Anderson Cooper, had to try to remind all of us that he still exists. He took issue with President Trump calling these uh, violent thugs uh, well, <laughs> thugs, violent thugs. And so Cooper asked, well, who's the real thug here? Well, Anderson, how about the one who's burning down your house or your business? <laughs> And what we're getting from CNN really is just a sample of how the whole of the mainstream media is attacking the president again for his efforts at doing the job left wing Democratic mayors and governors and police chiefs should have done in the first place but not to be left out of the chorus of virtue signaling. Now our Hollywood elite are having their own meltdowns over President Trump restoring law and order. So Samuel L. Jackson asks, if we just got martial law and did Trump just declare war on the public? I wonder which public he's talking about. Bette Midler tweeted out, hashtag Tiananmen Square. As if those protesters were guilty of beating and assaulting innocent bystanders while onlookers took their selfies laughing at the bloodied victims. And of course, what about uh, the Hollywood meltdown? What Hollywood meltdown would be complete without the borderline illiterate Alyssa Milano, who tweeted out, Effing Trump Gestapo, it's the death of democracy. So what's going on in all this? Well, I don't think it's hard to see. Our ruling class, our political class, our globalist elites made up of our politicians, our transnational corporate CEOs, our media elite, our Hollywood elite, our university elite, they all know that Trump is winning. They know that nationalism is winning, that populism is winning, and that their globalist world order is crashing. They get that. 
They understand that at the very least because everything that was supposed to bring Trump down hasn't. First, it was Russia and the bumbling Bob Mueller investigation would bring him down. And when that didn't work, it was quid pro quo with the Ukrainian president impeachment. And when that didn't work, then darn it, it was the coronavirus. Yeah. And when that didn't work, it was, oh, it was a permanent economic depression. Yeah. And when a former economic advisor to President Obama admitted the next several months would give us the single greatest economic boom the country has ever seen, that was it. Our political class exploded. They exploited a terrible and horrific tragedy surrounding George Floyd. And they use that as an excuse to launch a full-blown attack on our nation that they know is turning to the nationalist populist right and away from their globalist world order. They know that, and they would rather burn the nation to the ground than allow that to happen. But like we talked about in yesterday's video, it is all for naught. Our globalist elite's efforts are not going to work. In fact, they'll only speed up the process of Americans turning right. We featured a study by a Princeton University press, uh, professor yesterday that found that riots result in a clear trend favoring the political right. Voters consistently turn to the political right as a response to civic violence and unrest and rioting and looting. That's what these leftists just don't seem to get here. They think that by offering sympathetic coverage of these protests, these peaceful protests that involve destroying property and looting and burning and smashing car windows and trying to pull people out of their cars and assaulting innocent bystanders. Yes, yes, that kind of peaceful protest. They think that such puff portraits are good at galvanize supporters. Our Hollywood elite think that they're modeling for young tweens what true activism looks like behind the courage of a Twitter account. But this latest professor's study is but one of a number of studies that show that the more violence breaks out on a nation's streets, the more voters turn to the political right to quell it and restore law and order. And that, my friends, is precisely what's happening. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing, that these fledgling and failing globalist elites can do about it. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on how the riots are indeed red-pilling Americans like never before. I think you're going to absolutely love it. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.